troposphere. The signals are also slowing down when crossing the troposphere. What is the troposphere? It's the layer from zero, from the Earth's surface, up to 50 kilometers. <laughs> We have gases, temperature, pressure, humidity, dry gases, water vapor, a lot of things that makes that the signals are delayed when crossing the troposphere. In this delay, we can uh, have the difference between we have had the tropospheric hydrostatic or dry and the tropospheric wet part. This is more dry gases and this is more wet, more humidity, water vapor. In the troposphere, this is something like 90% uh, of the delay will be hydrostatic or dry and 10% will be wet. Usually what we do for the uh, hydrostatic and, and wet part, what we do is to uh, assume uh, what we call a mapping function, that's a function of the elevation, multiplied by a ZTD, which is the zenith tropo delay. What is this? This is the following. Let's imagine you have uh, uh, the Earth. I have a satellite here, a receiver here, and a satellite here. And let's imagine I put the uh, troposphere Something like here. As you can see, a satellite that is at low elevation angles, this elevation angle, crosses more troposphere than a satellite, than the same satellite when it's here in the zenith. In the zenith it means that from the Earth center to the receiver to the north. Then this is what we call the zenith tropo delay. And this is the slant tropo delay. Okay, the slant is the slant part, and the zenith is the one from the air center to the receiver up to the top. In order to uh, to make a comparison between the slant delay and the tropo delay, we use what we call obliquity factor. That is a function of the elevation of the satellite. If the elevation is ninety degrees, this will be the zenith, and this will be something like one. Yes, at zenith we have the zenith tropo delay. In low elevation angles, like 10 degrees, this can go to uh, up to uh, something like 10, the multiplication. Then we can go to 30 meters of a slant delay in troposphere for low elevation angles. A figure to keep in mind is that in zenith, you are the receiver and you look the sky, the tropospheric delay, the, the, the figure you need to keep in mind is 2.4 meters, 2.4 meters delay. When the satellite is going down lower to lower elevation angles, we can reach up to 30 meters of tropospheric delay because this satellite crosses more troposphere at low elevation angles. But the thing is that you have to take into account the navigation message does not provide troposphere. Okay? Troposphere is a very local effect. It's a very, very local effect to the receiver. Then the navigation message, if we want to provide a tropospheric model, global model for everybody, you can imagine how many stations you do you need everywhere to monitor, to characterize the, the troposphere. It's not possible, right? That's why the navigation message is not providing any tropospheric model. Then how do we remove it? The only solution is at receiver level. Receiver have to remove it somewhere, somehow, right? How? Using models. We have two components, hydrostatic component and also the wet component. 90% of the delay is the dry component. 10% of the delay is the wet component. Then in 2.4 meters of semi delay, 90% is the dry component or hydrostatic and the other is the wet. Then the good thing is that the hydrostatic component is very predictable with models. The wet component is not so predictable. Yes, because it depends on the water vapor, the weather you have uh, locally. That's why it's much more difficult to predict. But in any case, in the market, we have different models that try to predict and to remove and to model the uh, the troposphere. We have geodetic oriented models like the Sastamoyne and Hopfield model, or we have navigation oriented like NIL, as a NIL mapping function and these kind of things. Some of them, they have more complexity to implement. Other, uh, they need more database in the receiver, like for example, these kind of tables of pressure, temperature, you have to interpolate inside a table. But in any case, at the end, you apply a model and then you remove the troposphere. Some of them are more precise than the others, but in any case, troposphere is very well removed in general by models. For non-precise applications, a tropo model can reduce very well the, er the error because even if you have a residual error of troposphere, it's negligible. But for precision applications like PPP and uh, PPRTK, where we need centimeter level precision, these tropospheric models are a problem. 
Yes, it's not enough. It's not enough because this wet part, this wet part component is not predictable. Then what do we do in precise positioning point? We estimate it. As part of the equations in precise positioning, we are using the phase. Then in the phase, we are using ambiguities. You have to estimate ambiguities. But as part of the equation system, we need to estimate also the tropospheric delay. The zenith tropo delay. The user is a mapping function multiplied by a ZTD. And this ZTD, the zenith tropo delay, we estimate it as part of the solution of the Michaelman filter. We need to estimate a uh, zenith tropo delay every second. Uh, not necessarily. We can estimate it every few minutes, depending on the precision you want. This is a tropo model. Uh, you have the, sunny, the dry, the wet, and the mapping function. You apply the model and you, you have the delay in every single line of sight as a parabola, as you can see. When the satellite in the, is in the highest point, it means in the, in the zenith, then you have the less value of uh, troposphere. You have 2.4 meters of delay. If I change the color bar, instead of the PRN, the satellite, I put the uh, elevation of the satellite, you see that in high elevation, we have the less troposphere, which is the zenith tropo delay, yes? And now, if I multiply this, or I divide this by the mapping function, I will go to the zenith tropo delay, and then we have this. This is the zenith tropo delay evolution for Toulouse along one day, and you can see for every satellite. And once I apply this kind of model, what is the error I have behind? This is very well calibrated. This error is a sigma that is evolving with the elevation of the satellite, then Higher elevation, my error in my model will be lower, 12 centimeters of sigma. A low elevation, we can go to 2.2 meters of sigma. But if we have a mass angle of this of the receiver to 10 degrees, we go to a sigma trope of 65 centimeters. This is the sigma of the error on the tropo model once I correct it. For non-precision applications, it's okay, 12 centimeters. But for precision applications, 12 centimeters is a lot. That's why we need to estimate the troposphere. We cannot apply anymore a model. And the last, how to remove as well tropo, differential GNSS techniques. We have a baseline, so a base station with a baseline of a few kilometers. We make a single differences and the error will be the difference between the tropo in the baseline and the tropo in the rover. Then this difference will be higher or smaller depending on the baseline. If you are a, have a base station at 10 kilometers, the troposphere is almost all gone. But for farther distances, the troposphere is start to be uncorrelated.